Hello and welcome to the world of pride. And I am your host, the one and only Kippy Love. I was like smacking myself with the world of pride, you know. And when I say pride, I'm not talking about gay pride or I'm too good for the rest of you pride or an animal pride. I'm talking about the pride that you have inside your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your body, everything. It makes you who you are. I'm sorry, I was just having some raisin toast and trying to get the rest of the flavor down. <laughs> mm. Kind of early too. It's like four in the morning early. I, I get so used to getting up at 3.30 every morning to go to work, you know, get ready to go to work and everything that I just woke up. You know, I didn't even have the alarm set. I was like, oh well. But uh, anyway, oh, hold on just a second. I'm back. I had to go get some more water. They drank all the water up. But anyway, you know, I want to talk about pride and, you know, not today. I'm not going to talk about like your home life and your family life and everything else. I'm only going to talk about your work pride, your pride that you have at work, you know, when you go to work. You go to work, you know, you don't go to work to play around, you don't go to work to be lazy, you don't go to work to associate with your friends, it's not, it's not school, you know, at school you were supposed to go there to learn, not to skip and have fun and play with your friends and text and do all this stuff that you do today, you know, that's the reason why I call it school, you go to learn to educate your mind and get a diploma and all that stuff so you can one day get a good job. And that's the goal of work is you go to work, to work, to better yourself to where you can get a raise and maybe a career, maybe an advancement, you know, where you can be the manager or run your own store one day. That's what, you know, work is, you know, it's not going there to play with your friends, not go there to lay around and be lazy and get paid to do nothing, you know. You ever heard the old uh, saying people used to say, I don't get paid enough to do this job, you know, or what's the other one they always say, um, oh man, I forgot what the other one is, uh, it's something like that, you know, uh, uh, I don't get paid to do that. Uh, that That's not my job. That's what it is. That's not my job. Excuse me? When you go to work and you look for this job, you know, you, you sign the application, you know, to get the job in the first place. There are guidelines and, and stuff like that you have to abide by. You know, it's like, Okay, you're going to come here, and this is the job we want you to do. And you're going to do the job, and and you're going to get paid for that job, right? And, uh, and, and if you do a good job, we might give you a raise, you know? And if you keep doing that good job, and you try to do more than, you know, the average or something like that will give you bonuses or will give you a, a higher raise next time or something like that, you know? You know, so when you go to work, you go to work to improve your, your life and your situation, you know? You get a bigger paycheck, that means you get to buy more stuff at home or you get to pay better bills or you get to do other things with your money, like vacations and you want to do with your money but anyway you know you when you went in there to get the job you agreed to do the job 
you know, no matter what the cost, you know, now I understand if there's some managers out there that treat their employees like crap, you know, that, you know, maybe they don't feel whatever. But if you look in the Bible, the Bible says something. I don't remember exactly the Bible verse or the chapter and all that stuff because it's been so long ago since I remember hearing it or seeing it. But it says that even if your boss is wrong, he's still your boss. And you agreed, you know, you didn't investigate, you know, you didn't go and investigate this boss man and say, oh, he treats his employees like this or, or he gyps his employees like that or whatever, right? You, that's your fault because you didn't check him out. You didn't see what kind of boss he was. But you signed onto a contract you know, on paper or agreement that you would do whatever he asked you to do, no matter if it was good or bad, you know? And that's the same way as managers when they hired people today, you know, you they agreed, you know, to take you on and you told them that you were the best employee out there and then all of a sudden now you're like the worst employee out there. And they really can't do anything about it nowadays. Back in the day, you know, when I was growing up in the 80s and stuff like that, you were afraid to do anything out of the, you know, off the, you know, beaten path. You know, you were wrong, you know, you were wrong if you didn't do the right job, you know, and you didn't make the managers happy. They would fire you, just like that. You're fired, you know, and then you had a reputation, you know. People would call that manager and say, hey, was this guy finished? No, man, that's not this single door for whatever, you know. Didn't do his job, he was always late, he was, you know, he missed work, he, you know, uh, blah, 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 and people would be like, okay, thank you. And then when they would go to talk to you, they'd say, oh, you didn't tell me that you never went to work. They didn't tell me that you, you didn't tell me that you, you, you didn't do your job, you know, you lay around all day. Oh, I can't take you. I can't take you. I need some good employees. I don't need no bad employees. Sorry, bye. And then they would blacklist you. And it was hard for you to get a job. But the same thing with management. You know, they, they, now they have to take you for what you are. Even though you told me you were one kind of employee in the beginning, then they find out you're another employee in the end, and they really can't afford to let you go. I mean, they could, but then what if they hire another person? Then they gotta go through training, and wasting all that time training you, and then find out you're just as bad as the last guy. And it costs more to turnover. That's what they call it, turnover. A big turnover, or you know, a large turnover of, you know, people that come in, go in, go in, go in, come in, go in, jump, jump, you know. So most managers now just take you as you are and they, and you tell, and if your employee tells the manager, hey, uh, this employee's been slacking off, it's like, I know, but I really can't do anything. My hands are tied, you know, because if I get rid of his ass, it means you're gonna have to work twice as hard and you know, then you're going to have to hire some. We're going to have to hire a new person. You're going to have to train that person. Then you're going to have to go probably through the same shit with that person. You know, so, yeah, their hands are tied and some employees' hands are tied too, you know. It's like, I, I've seen it for how many years that I've been working? Probably 30, 40 years that I've been working professionally, you know. I see people come in and I see people go. I see people come in and stay. And some of those people that come in and go and some of the people that come in and stay, that's very, 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 very small percentage of people that are worth a darn. You know? And I'm talking about real people that are worth a darn. I'm not talking about people that or like maybe the 50% area that do a good job, but, and 
they do their job good, right? But yet, they bring a lot of baggage into the picture. Everything from drama to, you know, oh, I'm feeling terrible. Uh, you know, uh, bring your personal issues from home to work. You know, you know, you know, what they call it. It's not drama. They call it, um, uh, oh man, I can't remember what they call it. Um, gossip. You know, they gossip about everybody at the job. You know, and, you know, it's just like, most times when I hear that stuff, I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh-huh, uh -huh. oh, man, it's terrible, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, 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 yeah, uh -huh. that's, oh, that's terrible, uh -huh. oh, man, what the, what, yeah, I know, you know, oh, it's finally over, you know, and it's not. Day in, day out, day in, out, you know. And then you have employees that say, oh, I did this, I did this. But then when they're in front of you, they don't do anything, you know. It's terrible, you know. And I hate those people that push crap over on you, you know, because they're too lazy or they're trying to show off because they got seniority or whatever. And it's just, it, 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 it just irks me all the time when all this crap goes on. I mean, I would love to be able to have everybody be like me. I mean, I don't have any problems talking about, oh, did you see the newest football game? I'm sorry, I don't watch football. I, I'm not in stats, so what else you want to talk about? You know, plain and simple. You know, don't force stuff on me. You know, if you want to talk about PlayStation, hey, let's talk about PlayStation until it's time to get back to work. You know, if you want to talk about wrestling, I don't get into wrestling that much, so, but, but I'll be nice to hear about it for maybe five or ten minutes, and then I'm like, I lose my interest, you know, I'm time, it's time to go back to work, you know, <laughs> but, I mean, literally, you know, I go to work every morning, the same time, I do the same thing every day, I mean, you know, I, 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 I cook, I clean, I prep, you know, I, I, I get there at one time and I leave at one time, you know, every day, the same time, you know, and I'm always getting things done. I'm trying to get it done as quick as possible, whereas some people might take an hour, two hours, three hours to do one job. And that's all I have to do is one job and it takes them two or three hours, right? Or more. Whereas me, I can get in there and do the same amount of work, same job in like maybe 30 minutes. I mean, it don't take me but 30 minutes to do another job that somebody took three hours to do just because that's all the manager told them to do. That's all they were entitled to do. Right? And they say, well, since that's the only thing I want to do, and I don't want to be in any big rush, I want to waste all this time doing this, I don't have to do anything else. If I get done quicker, then people want me to do this shit. But I just can't be like that. You know? And I don't push stuff on everybody else. Hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? Can you get me that? Can you do this? Can you pull that out? Can you... No, I don't do that to everybody else. Because if I have to beg and plead and and bug other people to do my job, then why am I even there at work if I'm not working? It's, 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 it's stupid. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy, right? It's just not fair to the rest of the population out there that are working to have to play this game. You know? You know? And I always do my job the best I can. I may not be perfect. I may mess up once in a while. But I always do my job. You know, I don't 
sit there and do half-ass job, you know, well, I got eight items to do, but I don't feel like doing all eight out items. I'm just going to do four and, and somebody else is going to come in. Kippy will come in tomorrow. I know he'll be here tomorrow and I'll just tell him, Hey, I just didn't feel like doing eight items. I only did four. So guess what? You got to do the other four. Sorry. You know, because I'm lazy. You know, you know, I clean every day. You know, I may not clean a lot every day, but I clean every time I see a dirty mess. I wipe it down. If I have time, I do this. If I have time, I try to do that. If I have time, I try to do this. You know, I get, I'm the only person in my job that cleans the ceilings and the walls the way they should be cleaned and, and whatever. It took me like almost two years with all the stuff I, I do at my job. It took me almost two years to go completely around the whole entire kitchen. This isn't a small kitchen. You know, you imagine, uh, you know, I'd say almost as big as the restaurant, I mean, the seating part up at the front where we might have maybe 12, 13 tables up front. And I'm talking about big tables. These aren't small tables, big tables, like, Enough for four to eight people to sit in. So you got like 13 of those tables out front. That's about how big the kitchen is. And I start at one section. I went all the way around one wall. Come around this side like this. Come down here. Get behind that wall. And go and go back on this side. I'm going back over the old stuff that I already cleaned. You know? Grease and grime and everything that's on the ceiling. And, and you spray the walls. And you can just see the grease coming down the side of the wall. I've washed all them walls. I've cleaned all the ceilings. You know? And I do the best I can do. You know? I was going to clean out the oven yesterday. But I ran out of time. Because I had to wait on a product to come in. So I could finish doing my prep. You know, if people, more people would be like me and go to work to go to work, not to playground, but to work. That's what somebody told me one time. This is not a playground. This is a workplace. You know, you don't come here to play. You come here to work. That's why they call it work. That's why you're getting paid to work. You're not getting paid to clean. I mean, to, to play. You know, I had somebody tell me one time that the, the best cook is not the person that does the best cleaning. The best cook is not the best cook for doing the best prepping. You know, the best cook is not the best cook because he's the best cook or he can cook better than anybody else. You got three things that you do in a business, in a restaurant, in a, any anything you do. If you're doing, you know, mail room, if you're doing it working at the mail post office, and you're in the mail room, your first objective is the mail. Your second objective is to clean, to clean that area up. You know the little things where you put the mail in, they go down the slide, you know, down the slide, and they go, or go to wherever they're supposed to go to, and you drop the mail in there, go, goes, shoots it like that. You got to make sure those are cleaned out every so often. Make sure there's no debris that fell in there. It could be a stamp that fell off in the thing and gets jammed in there and mess up the, 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 the you know, the machine that goes like that, you know. You have to clean the floor. You have to, you know, you can't just go in there every day and work and never clean, you got to clean. And you got to prep. You got to get, you got to fill all your stuff up if you want. If you're going to be uh, doing, uh, sending off packages and stuff like that, you got to make sure your, your, all your boxes are filled so you can go over there and grab one. You don't want to be over there and trying to grab one and then you don't have any boxes over there to grab. Hello? You know? And you can't, you know, so you have to do all of it. At 
the same time. You got to have it clean. You got to have it stocked and, and prepped and ready. And you have to do the job that you're required to do. You know, so if more people were like me that did all three of those things instead of just one, I mean, that's what some of the people at my job do. They walk in, they go, I'm just going to cook. That's all I'm going to do. That's all. I'm going to serve. That's all I'm going to do. You know, they, they, you know, and it doesn't work that way. You have to do all those three jobs to do your job and do it. There's no sense in putting it off. You know, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. If you did that, look at the, the front door of somebody that gets mail and is gone for a month. If you don't get the mail every day, it's going to pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up. And then you're not going to want to do anything because it's too much. You clean as you go. And you prep as you go. You cook as you go. You know, everything will be smooth sailing from this day forward. But anyway, that's our video. Talk to y'all later. Bye.